Don't you turn that station, don't you turn that dial, because if you do, you're gonna miss a really, 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 really good show. We're taping this, we're taping this program on February 17th, and we're gonna call the primary election, which is March 18th. More than 30 days before, here and only here, a public affairs exclusive, you're gonna find out it's over. You're gonna find out who won the Republican primary. It's over, it's over. Don't you turn that dial. Don't you turn the station. If you do, you won't know who's going to win the Republican primary. And if you turn it, you're not going to find out who's going to win more than eight months away from now. Who's going to be the next governor? Who's going to win the general election? You're going to find that out here on public affairs. Don't you turn that station. Don't you turn that dial. Because if you do, you're going to miss a really, 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 really good show. You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name. Politics is our game. And oh, are we going to be doing a lot of politics and public policy this evening? Because as I said in the tease, we'll be discussing the winner of the Republican primary. Let's get right into it. The every, but, well, if you haven't been following the Republican primary, if you're a Democrat, if you're an independent, if you just don't care, if you think this doesn't matter, that's fine. Just watch this show, and if you go to a cocktail party, you'll be able to sound knowledgeable. You don't have to pay attention to the, all that lead up to the Republican primary. You'll want to find out who the four, pri the four Republican candidates are, and you want to find out who's going to win on March 18th. It's, it's over, it's done. You'll be so, oh, you'll sound so smart at that cocktail party, and you'll even be able to tell those others in that party, at that party, why, why the person who's gonna win the primary won. Let's start from the bottom and work our way up, okay? Number four in the running, coming in a poor fourth with 6% of the vote, Dan Rutherford, okay? Why? Well, you see, Dan didn't get the message. He missed a lot of messages, okay? I mean, he's gonna either drop out, it's that bad, or he's gonna come in last place with 6% of the vote. 6%. The guy who says he can win because this is why he tells people he can win, because he's the only Republican running for governor who's won statewide office. He won, he, he did win in 2010, treasurer. But as Barack Obama will tell you, it doesn't matter. Those offices like treasurer and lieutenant governor, you can get lots of votes. You can even win. Nobody even knows what the hell the treasurer does. Do you? Do you really know what the state treasurer does? Oh, he kind of total. He kind of handles the investments of this residual money that's available, but he's so constrained. It really is nothing. It's a nothing position. Okay, he said he was going to use it as a bully pulpit, like he would talk about state employee pension reform. He hasn't. But the main reason why Dan Rutherford is going to lose, he, you know, to be a really good candidate, you have to have professional discipline. You have to have personal discipline. He has neither. Dan, we like you. He's been on the show. It's nothing personal, okay? It's like the mob when they kill somebody. It's not personal, okay? So the fact that I'm saying, Dan, you're dead man walking, no, no, you didn't have discipline. Dan had a problem. State employee stepped forward and said he was going to make allegations of sexual harassment. He, okay, a male employee, is going to make allegations of sexual harassment against Dan Rutherford, and that's a state employee in Dan's office, in the state treasurer's office, and he was going to make allegations of political abuse, political power abuse, coercing people to do political activity on state time. I broke the story, okay? If you want to know what's going on, you come here to public affairs. We didn't break it on public affairs, we did it on local Fox, because I went out when Dan had a press conference and he said, oh, allegations are going to be made and they're totally untrue, but I can't tell you what the allegations are. You realize how stupid that sounds? So I just went out and found out what the allegations would be. I was interviewed by Mike Flannery on local Fox. I said what I've just said, those sexual harassment, political power abuse, and that's what they were. They were filed on, I guess it was the 10th, February 10th, okay, or 11th, one of those days, federal complaint doing this set. Now, he's presumed innocent. I'm not saying Dan's guilty, but as, as anybody will tell you, in politics, in politics, the way people view this, and you've only got, that lawsuit could go on for two years, so it doesn't really matter 
as to how it comes out. It matters what people think in the next 30 days because they'll be voting, in a sense, on that lawsuit and what they think of it on March 18th. And a lot of them are going to think, where there's smoke, there's fire. And there isn't just one person standing up and making these allegations. There are other people. They may not have made them publicly, but they have told people, they have told me and others, that there's something to these allegations. Still doesn't make it true, but once that gets out, and it is getting out, that's a major, major problem for Dan Rutherford. Now, he can, uh, he can do the Clinton trick of the four Ds, deny, delay, distract, and distort, and go after this person, the accuser. He can do that. But the thing is, it's a little odd because this is somebody Dan's known, I think, for like 15 years. This is a person that Dan personally hired into the state treasurer's office, and he knew he was a Democrat then. He could say, oh, he's doing somebody else's bidding, the Democratic Party. He could say he's doing the rounders bidding. But why? Why would Dan Rutherford, state treasurer, hire this guy? All right. So those are some of the questions you ask. And you got to have discipline, really, in politics. you got to have people working for you. They don't. There's a way to get your employees to raise money for you, and it's the legal way. You don't set up quid pro quos. You don't say things like, oh, if you hold this kind of position in this office, you should be fundraising at a certain level, and you're not. You don't set up quarterly reviews that seem to indicate the people who engage in polit political activity on state time do better in terms of compensation increases. No, you just don't do those things. Okay. Because you got the memo. When U.S. Attorney Patrick Fitzgerald came here in, 20, in 2001, and then over the course of the next 10 years, he indicted and convicted a, city, a, state, a governor, George Ryan, after he left office, and then, and then a sitting governor, okay, was arrested, Rob Blagojevich, and he was convicted. No, 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 you cannot do these things, Dan. You can't do them. You can't even do anything that would cause anybody to say you do them. You have to be that careful, okay? Yeah, we're not saying Dan is guilty of anything, just stupidity, okay? Don't do things that elicit those allegations. Don't appoint people to those positions. Don't, okay? Because you know why? Illinois citizens are fed up. They're fed up with politicians who won't take a position and speak out. That's the other thing. Rutherford would never take... Obama said this. You could agree with Barack. You could disagree on public affairs years before he was elected U.S. Senator, before he was elected president. He said, you know what di differentiates him, him from other candidates, especially in the Democratic primary for U.S. Senate? He knows the issues. He takes the position. He speaks out. That's so rare in politics. You would think it would be so common. Know the issues. Take a position and speak out. Does Dan Rutherford know the issues? Possibly. Does he take a position now? He always says, if you hear him on any position, he says, you know, I work for Service Master and um, part-time when he's not in the legislature, when he's not busy being a state treasurer. And he says, you know, when we do contracts, there are lots of components. And so I never really say there's one thing or other that's crucial. So I can't tell you specifically how I'd vote on a tax increase. He said, I can't take a tax pledge because everything is like at play. Oh, no, Dan. Can't do that anymore. Cannot do that, okay? So Dan never got it. Uh, oh, and the last thing, he commissioned a study on these allegations, taxpayer funded, to find out if there was anything to these allegations. And he said the report would be released last week. And then when it came time to release, he said, nope, you know, filed a lawsuit. Well, he knew the person was gonna file a lawsuit. That was what he said. Filed a lawsuit and he says, I cannot do it. Anything that comes out has to come out and the course of the lawsuit. That is a lie. That's a lie. You shouldn't lie, Dan, okay? It's not true. I know you didn't go to law school, Dan. I know you didn't, but you should know. That's just not true. You can ask anybody who knows a modicum of the law. You're not constrained not to hand that out. Your lawyer might advise you not to. He might think it's a, you know, that would be helpful for defending your lawsuit. He might even think it would be helpful politically. He'd be wrong. You cannot tell people you're going to do something and then not do it. Nope. Okay. So Dan is over. He was known as Mr. Caveat, unable to state a clear position on anything, on pension reform, on Medicaid, nothing. Okay. He's done. Stick a fork in Dan. Okay. He's done. Now we go to, we go to our next candidate, Senator Kirk Dillard, who's going to come in a distant third with maybe 18% of the vote. Actually, not much less than he got last time when he almost got the nomination. The difference then, there were so many candidates, six, 
fragmenting the vote, he almost won with 20 or 21 percent. This time, not even going to be close. No, no, because one candidate's got 6 percent, that's Rutherford, and then Dillard's gets 18. Oh no, that means, add it up, those two get 24? There's more than, there's 76 percent going to somebody else, other two guys. Can't win that way, Kirk, okay. His background, legislative director for Governor Jim Thompson. Dillard was a chief of staff for only two years for Jim Edgar. He keeps saying he was the chief of staff like he ran the thing. Two years. That's why I believe that's right. Two years. Edgar was there for eight years. How much credit, if Edgar did anything right and he did a number of things right, how much credit does, how much credit goes to Dillard? And anyway, do people really want to vote on resumes? Do they want to say, what did you do? Like in 19, he did this when? He did this in 1994. So let's see, we're in 20, 2014. That would be okay, like 20 years ago. Kirk, they're going to make you, they're going to make you the next governor because unemployment was relatively low for two years when you were there, as as chief of staff. Seriously, is there anybody in your campaign who told you that? Because if there is, you should fire him. Fire him. It's not the way things work. So we like Kirk, he's come on the show, he's a smart guy, he was a state senator, he had these other positions, but, and he's liked, he's liked by conservatives. He has a pretty good voting record on the social issues, on abortion, he's pro-life, also has a sort of a moderate tone, kind of like Barack Obama, you know, even though Barack was no conservative, he had a moderate tone to him, so even though he was quite liberal in his views, there were conservatives who liked him. So like Dillard, He's quite conservative. There are moderates who like him. But the major weakness, Kirk, I'm laying it on the line because I'm your friend. Well, I'm not your friend, but I'm friendly to everybody. No meaningful message. If you ask yourself, what was Dillard saying during the campaign? What was the main message? Nobody knows. I mean, he's out there. He just got the endorsement of the Illinois Education Association. It's a major public sector union, teachers union. And he's talking about how his father, I think, one of his parents was a teacher. So he loves teachers, he loves workers, he loved, like the teachers unions. What, Kirk, here's a statistic for you. In CPS, one out of every four kids, well, excuse me, yeah, one out of every four kids in CPS, counting even the kids who are doing well, 25% read at grade level in the fourth grade and 75% don't. Do you really want to talk about how wonderful the teachers are? I mean, something's going wrong there. Maybe it's the teachers' union. Maybe it's something else. But you spend $15,000 per kid per year, and you, you seek the endorsement of the Illinois Education Association. Why? Because he needed money. He had no money. We'll get to why that is. OK, but he had no money. So he needed the money. They said they'll give him probably like $250,000. So he didn't vote for pension reform, even though he had said he was sort of for it. He didn't vote for the pension reform legislation that passed. And he said, why? Because he didn't have time to analyze it. Now I know, okay, 400 pages, possibly legislation, only had two days. But that can't be the reason. That can't be the reason. Tell the truth. Truth be told, Dillard wanted the endorsement of the IEA. He wanted to show him, you know, he had some flexibility, why he may not support this state employee pension reform. Quinn was pushing for it. And so he got the endorsement. But now what's he going to do? Tell the Republican Party voters, the base, that he didn't support state employee pension reform, not because it didn't go far enough. That's what Rauner's saying. Not because it wasn't a 401k. No, because he didn't have time to read it. And, and somebody might have been adversely affected, maybe a teacher, and we have to look at that. Oh, like how many people will vote for you, Kirk, when that gets out? $250,000. Oh, Never sell your soul, okay? My, my advice to all people running for office, never sell your soul, okay? I think that's like Carol King's song. Carol, Carol King's song, okay. So, um, so that's kind of the, that's, that's the deal. Oh, deal around sunsetting the tax increase. I didn't vote for the tax increase. That's too cute by half, Kurt. I dodge. <clears throat> yes, you didn't vote for it, but they want to hear you say, no way you would support an extension. It must sunset. And further, they want to hear you say, it's sunset, you still have an increase. It went from 3% for the individual income tax to 5%. Then when it sunsets, if it does in 2015, if no further action is taken, meaning the legislation kicks, 
is set <coughs> so that it will go back from 5% to 3.75%. Still an increase. Brady wants to go back to 3%. Brady wants to repeal the whole income tax. We'll come to that. That's a position, Kirk. That will sell in the Republican primary. So <clears throat> I'm not even saying you're wrong, Kirk. You may be. But you'll never get elected taking those positions. It's like a Hail Mary when Kirk was seeking the Illinois Education Association endorsement. Hail Mary. And it's not going to work. Okay. Oh, Dillard on cutting spending. He managed Medicaid under Edgar like 20 years ago. Are you talking about reducing eligibility, Kirk? Are you talking about... Because if they don't, don't go back to any of this other stuff. Don't confuse it. Have a clear, cogent message. All right. So, Dillard's gone, Rutherford's gone, stick a fork in it, they're done, okay? I mean, I really, I, nice guys, I hope they come back on the show, I hope they know we can be fair, but, you know, politics, it's ruthless. You have to, you have to call them like you see them, all right? So, he's toast, okay? He, he may get some of the moderate vote that Korean Wood got, even though he's pro-life, I mean, but there's just not enough there, you can't. You can't do it. So the only effective challenger to Bruce Rauner who will come to is Bill Brady. And, but he's going to fall way short. He'll get 26% of the vote, which is better than Dillard, way better than Rutherford, but it's not enough. Why? The short of it, he just doesn't have the money. A very clear message. Brady's come on the show often. We don't say that like that makes you a good person, but you can tell he's not afraid, not afraid to state his position. He wants to repeal the whole increase of the income tax increase. He wants to go back from 5 to 3% more. He wants to repeal the whole individual income tax, the whole schmear. There are states that have no income tax. Texas, other states, they get by. They tax other things. Don't tax income. Don't tax output that people have. Don't tax productivity. Tax maybe consumption. Get it? I mean, you know, so Bill's on to things. He just didn't, you got to go out. And look, I should say, my predictions are right if nothing else changes. If, you know, if Senator Brady can go out and find somebody to give him a million dollars, and he can do that because there are campaign contribution limits in Illinois, but because Rauner's given himself, Bruce Rauner, so much money, the limits are off. So really, if you're a millionaire out there and you want to support somebody like Brady, do it. Write that check. You can do it. You can do it. Is he going to get that? I don't think so. But if that happens, Bill would be very competitive, and you'd have a very strong race. Not, it's not going to affect Rutherford and those guys, I mean, and Dillard, but you'd have a very tight race between Rauner and Brady. But without that money, okay, without that money, he just can't be competitive, okay? He's got the right ideas. He talks about school vouchers, school choice. He's a believer. I asked, I asked Kirk Dillard when he got the endorsement from the Education Association. I said, well, Kirk... Now, with that endorsement, because though that union is very against school voucher, school choice, they're against charter schools, they're against any kind of reform, any kind of competition. Can you support school vouchers as vigorously as Bruce Rauner is? He didn't really answer that. You can see, I mean, he said like kind of much. You cannot say that. You have to say, yes, I adamantly support school vouchers. They can give me that money. That's fine. But I've told them I will support school vouchers and school choice. But he didn't say that. Okay. He didn't. So that takes us, I mean, that takes us, uh, that takes us to, you know, to Bruce Rauner, who's leading the pack. You might say, if you followed Republican politics, or politics in general, you'd never hear of Bruce Rauner because until this year, he just wasn't in the game, okay? He's a businessman. His net worth is reported to be something like $700 million, almost a billionaire. Has eight homes, lives in Winneka. But he has consistently supported school vouchers, school choice. He's supported charter schools. He's given substantial funds to charter schools, they need that because they don't get their capital costs paid for by the city like the traditional public schools do. And charter schools are public schools, but they have to scrounge to get people like Rauner to give them money to get their building so they can offer a choice to kids, help kids who are in failing schools. Rauner's done that. Maine, what's he done his background? You know, he's an investment banker. He's somebody who 
They take in funds and they invest them. They are venture capitalists, okay? They look for good opportunities. They look for companies that are failing and they turn them around. <clears throat> they invest pension funds and the public sector unions and some private sector unions are now going after Rauner because why? They're telling everybody in the Republican primary, we think this is the strongest, strongest opponent to our guy, the Democrat, okay, Pat Quinn. And so we want Rauner out of there. We'd like to have Rutherford. We'd like to have, we'd like to have, uh, you know, uh, Rutherford there. We'd like to have Dillard. That's why the IEA, Illinois Education Association Teachers Union, is endorsing him. They might even prefer Brady because, see, Rauner's got a consistent, cogent message. And, you know, all good politicians, they may not like Rauner, but they respect him. They know what I know and what Dillard should have known and what Rutherford should have known. You win in politics with a consistent, cogent message. Like, it's not really brain surgery, really. Respect, and in the Republican primary especially, these are people who've got, these are idea people, okay? They may be social conservatives, they may be economic conservatives, but they got ideas. They don't want, they don't want babble, okay? They don't want to hear about like your father was a teacher or something. They don't. Who told you that, Kirk? I mean, really, who told you that? All right, so that's what Rauner does. If you go to, he doesn't do all the forms, he gets criticized for that, but when he shows up, he says there are, there are four things, okay, that Rauner wants. Term limits. He's trying to get a constitutional amendment that would have term limits for legislators and for the governor, two terms. He needs to get a certain amount of votes to put that on the ballot, okay? So he talks about term limits, nobody else does. He invests in that. He talks about improving education, point number two, school vouchers, school choice, charter schools. He's not afraid to say that. I haven't gotten to interview him. I wish I did, but I have gotten to ask him a few questions. He said, Mr. Rauner, you support school vouchers, school choice, expansion of charter schools? Yes. That's what he said. A clear yes. Now, that may hurt him with the teachers' unions, but I don't think he thinks he's going to get a lot of those votes. He's not anti-teacher. He just, they're not going to vote for him, Okay. Be, not because all teachers, there may be teachers who individually will, you, will, but the teachers unions and the union bosses, as, as Mr. Rauner puts it. You know, Kirk is now throwing Hail Mary's talking about, we got somebody in the Republican Party who's anti-worker, anti-union. No, Kirk, to be fair now, he's anti-union boss, okay? He's not anti-worker, okay? He doesn't think... I mean, he would even say, if we could, I know he's got problems politically with saying this, he would say minimum wages cause increases in unemployment. And Kirk, you would say that. And so would anybody who knows basic economics. And Kirk, you have said that, so don't play around here. And Brady said that, so Bill, don't play around. And Mr. Rauner, don't play around. You guys are all smart. I don't know about Dan, you know, who knows where he is these days. But Rauner, Brady, uh, Dillard, you guys all know the laws of supply and demand. You know when you raise minimum wages, when you have a minimum wage that's higher than the market wage, you cause demand to go down and supply to go up, you cause an increase in unemployment. At least Rauner had the guts to say that at some point he shouldn't have backed off. Dillard, you had the guts to say it at some point you shouldn't have gone off to other people. Bill, you know better, okay? But, so that's Rauner. Term limits, improving education, the quality, and lowering the cost, especially for the low-income kids who are not learning how to read in CPS and other inner city areas of the state of Illinois. He wants to keep taxes down and spending down. He thinks that's a way to keep jobs up and the business climate up. And that's pretty much it. And he's against, you know, he wants real pension reform. That's an adjunct of those other things I mentioned. He wants real Medicaid reform. That's be enough. It is. So he gets 50% of the vote. 50% of the vote, that's pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, 50%, okay? So there it is, there's the vote on March 18th, Rauner, 50%, Brady, 26%, Dillard, 18%, Rutherford, 6 Browner almost doubling more than his closest competitor, Bill Brady. Now, as I said, assuming things don't change, I mean, I'm not, that's not, a, you know, it's not waffling. As I said, if Brady can go and get a million dollars from a contributor, he has 
because we have what we call mom. If you want to understand politics, in case you're like in the humanities and you never really got it, you didn't study economics and you don't know what a minimum wage is, you at least know your mom, and mom is good. And what does mom stand for? Maybe we can get that graphic up somewhere. Terry, show your stuff. Find that graphic. We got that graphic about mom. M, M is for message, okay? That's the M of mom. O is for organization, and M is for money, okay? M-O-M. I think it's like, what is it, Terry? I don't know. Terry, Terry Paulus is like a fantastic director. He puts up with, that man puts up with more stuff, and we do a quality show because Terry Paulus is here as the director. See? I mean, leading the pack due to mom right there. Okay? Message, organization, and money. Mr. Paulus is really, really, really good. Serious. I'm not, not sucking up, not pandering, but we actually have one person, basically one person. He gets a little help from Jay Steinberg, who's great. A little help from Mike Hoyle is great. But basically, this show technically is put on by Terry Pauls. One guy can do graphics, he can do directing, he can do the cameras, he can do the audio. That's good. I mean, like, way better than what I do. So, <clears throat> in any case, message, organization, and money. If you got a clear message, if you have resources to have and set up a good organization, and then if you have the money to get your word out, buy TV time, you'll almost surely, and you're a good person. You, you make sense, okay? People would like to have a cup of coffee with you. They see you and they like you. They'd like to have a beer with you. If you do that, you do mom and you're a good guy, you're going to win. Rauner is going to win. Not just the primary, folks. We told you. We only got about probably two minutes left. So you're wondering in the general election, of course, <clears throat> Pat has like a minor, minor competitor for the Democratic primary. But so Pat Quinn, of course, will win the, win the uh, Democratic nomination. But, you know, his approval ratings are way down, and people said, oh, they were down last time. Yeah, but he didn't have a strong opponent last time. He had Bill Brady. We like Bill and his focus and so forth, but he wasn't quite as focused as he should have been, and he didn't have the money. Rauner's got it. He can spend it on his own. He can raise it from his friends. There are a lot of rich people who will give it to him because they like him, and they like his ideas. So <clears throat> this time, and... We haven't mentioned social issues at all. We haven't mentioned abortion. We haven't mentioned guns. We haven't mentioned same-sex marriage. We don't have to. Okay, we, you can talk about that, and, you know, Quinn's going to try to paint this guy somehow. as like He's going to try to say Browner's pro-life, and he's going to increase it. He's not. He's probably pro-choice. But the pro-lifers don't even mind him because they think the economic issues are so important. They're willing to look the other way. The people who think he's not so much in favor of traditional marriage in the Republican Party. Those people look the other way. They're really focused. They're really focused on somebody who's got it right on the economic issues, wants to turn over Springfield, and it's on his head. Those unions say, oh, but Rauner, Rauner, look, we're going to continue to speak as the credits roll, okay? But I very much want to thank all our listeners for paying attention. We'll be back to our usual show next week. We'll have a guest here. We're not going to do this all the time. I know Berkowitz is a hard... It's a lot to take for 30 minutes, but you did learn all of this. And the thing is, so Rauner wins that general election, 55-45. He wins it because he stays focused on the issues, improving education. If Carlton wants to know where you cut, you cut on Medicaid. Where do you cut? You can cut education. You can actually improve the quality of education. You can cut state employee uh, pension benefits. That's what you do, Senator Cullen. You come over here and debate, okay? You debate that issue, okay? That's what you do. I mean, that's, that's the timer saying, it's up, time's up. Come on back next week and every week to watch Public Affairs. We'll have more. We hope to have Bruce Rauner on. Bruce, want to be on the show? I think you should. Okay, we're just a hop, skip, and a jump away from you. Okay? Pat Quinn, want to be on? We'll have you both on together. Frame the issues. Minimum wages, that's going to be a big issue, but it turns out minimum wages are not good for low-skilled employees. And they're going to hear about that. They're going to learn that. Pat Quinn, if he favors a higher minimum wage, he favors an increase in unemployment. Yes, that's essentially what he wants.